When I was 10, I learned about the history of the Great Wall of China and was shocked by the suffering that went behind the construction of such a great landmark. When I was 13, I read The Boy in Striped Pajamas and learned about the Holocaust. When I was 14, the Civil Rights Movement taught during Fundamental Humanities caught my attention and inspired me to take History 2 as my H2 subject. Because of that, I was constantly asked the question, just why? My History 2 class has a whopping six students, including me. Apparently, it's a commonly shared sentiment that history is too complicated, too hard to score, there's too much to memorize, and it's just irrelevant. Plain, boring, hard. This is what history means to many. But does history have to mean so little? I love history, and I chose to study it for a multitude of reasons. But mainly it boils down to what history truly means to me. And maybe that might shock some people, because it's not just the studying of the past. It's not just plain memorizing dates, conferences, or articles. It's a link, a way to connect, connect with our roots, our heritage, and our family. And history does just that for me. It really does. In today's society, where once individual complex is ever so emphasized, common topics of interest within my family are scarce. But the one thing we've all been able to converse about is history. I spend many hours talking to my elderly grandfather about Chinese history. It's our thing, our special thing. History only evolves and broadens as people change, as time changes. And so in some way, it's always been able to keep up the times. My very first encounters with history had to do with my family. And it's somehow always been that way. Growing up, my father bought historical documentaries. These could be on any historical topic, sometimes on something as simple as the history of trains. I was maybe four or five. I didn't understand them. But I slowly grew to cherish these moments. They were simple, short, but surely meant a lot. I can still remember us giggling, the couch squeaking under the weight of four children, while my parents turned on the television. We would watch intently, engrossed in the discussion of the pyramids, the Great Leap Forward, the Cultural Revolution, Chernobyl, and more. Some days we'd sit around a dinner table and then debate on what we had watched earlier that day. Family debates on historical topics are common in my household. They made up my childhood, whether it be my dad launching into some lecture on the world wars, my know-it-all brother chiming in, and my sisters fact-checking them. Even today, years later, we still have these discussions and debates. I remember myself just a couple months ago, coming back home so excited, so inspired. I couldn't wait to talk to my family about what I had learned in school earlier that day. And so, around the dinner table, it began. Just like how my father had done for years. Just like my brother had done while studying for O-levels. And just like my sister had done the year before. It was my turn to share and inquire. When I struggled with an assignment regarding World War II, my sister did not hesitate to help me. When I needed help understanding the Vietnam War, my brother spent his day off NS explaining it to me. When I needed someone to test me on my content, my mother stepped right in. Just like how my grandfather explained the bits of the Great Leap Forward, when I needed it, my family was there. They gave me tips, tricks, and little tidbits of information. Studying history in school has its benefits, but the most important one to me is the fact that I can truly talk to my family about history. History has given my family an endless field of topics to talk about. The opportunity to better bond together siblings and, the and to better understand different perspectives. History is a bridge. It's a bridge that connects people that differ so greatly and tightly links together my family and it's a bridge that I am eternally grateful for. History has also taught me human virtues that I don't think I would have otherwise learned. Because history doesn't just have to mean world history. It can mean something close to you, like family history. Learning my family history has taught me the true meaning of humility and what it means to appreciate the people around me. Often find, oftentimes I find that I take for granted the comfortable circumstances that I live in. But when I learn about my family history, when I hear about heartbreaking stories, I feel foolish. My father is a strong man, a man who sacrificed his career to stay home and care for us, a man who has tried his best to teach me right from wrong. He lies on the floor to read the newspaper, 
a habit from young, he says. A habit nurtured because he grew up in a two-room HB flat, living with his 15 other relatives, where the only table was a small square one used to dine. My father enjoys dinner tabletop, where we catch up on the day and, of course, talk about history. He never did have that growing up. Eat fast, don't talk. If not, the food will get cold before other people sit down. His tough upbringing was full of challenges, yet he never lets that knock him down. He does his best for my family and me to live comfortably. And it's honestly hard to say just how much I look up to my father, a great man. My grandmother is a wonderful woman. One that cooks delicious food for me every night and cuts fruit when I'm down. She told me, she told me bedtime stories growing up as well. She never did have much of a childhood, you see, having to work as a helper for foreign families at the age 10 just to pay back family loans. As a result, she had to leave school. My grandmother, my ama, always reminds me about the privilege of having an education. And while she might not be able to articulate her words well, the pound somehow always gets across. Learning this little section of my father's past, my grandmother's past, and my family history has opened my eyes. I'm sitting at my table now, and I never did think much about it. After all, it's just a table, isn't it? Yet my father never had that growing up and had to study on the floor. My own room, a privilege I cannot begin to describe. And really, through the lens of understanding hardships by learning my family history, I can finally truly appreciate my way of life now. My father, my mother, my grandparents, my family. They've all been through so much just for my generation to live comfortably so that we would never have to go through the challenges, the pain, the days of endless work. This I am grateful for. But at the end of the day, history is just this bridge. It depends on how you want to cross it. I choose my family. Much of what history means to me is incomprehensible in words, but I hope my sharing can convey at least a fraction of that meaning. It's funny, really, how history means the world to me, when it is in fact the study of the world. History connects to my daily life in many more ways than one, and has influenced me greatly. Somehow, learning about events decades ago and talking about strangers has brought my family together. And so, why history? Well, it's weaved so deeply into my family dynamic, and really, both mean the world to me. Thank you.